So our topic for the session will be about corporate taxation. So we will look into the income taxation of a corporation. You already know that when we talk about your corporations, that's, that does not include only those resident, those the, those resident foreign corporations and RFC or domestic corporations, but will also include those other types of corporations, which is uh, considered as corporation under the tax code. So although they are not corporations, the tax code considered them as a corporation, such as your partnership, your joint ventures, your uh, trusts, and your different associations. So let's look into your corporate taxation. So the topics here in our corporate taxation is, of course, how do we tax the corporations, particularly their income, and uh, how do we file for your corporate tax return or corporate income tax return, including the different due dates and the different forms needed for us to file the corporate income tax return. So let's start by defining first what is a corporation. A corporation uh, is defined under the tax code as inclusive of partnerships, no matter how created or organized, joint stock companies, joint accounts, associations, insurance companies, but it does not include a general professional partnership. Why? because a GPP is considered as exempt and your joint venture or consortium formed for the purpose of undertaking construction projects. Why? Because it is considered as exempt or engaging in petroleum operation called geothermal or other energy operations with consortium agreement under a service contract with the government. Again, because we consider that as exempt. If you still remember uh, during the start of your income taxation, when we talk about your different tax titles or the different taxpayers, we have discussed that some joint ventures or uh, those participations or contracts with the government are considered exempt. GPP is considered exempt. That's why when we talk about corporation or a taxable corporation, you do not include these items. So we have three, general professional partnership, a joint venture for the purpose of your construction or petroleum operation, and a, any agreement under a service contract with the government because they are considered exempt. So all other else are taxable and within the ambit of the term corporation, or is taxed under your corporate income taxation. So any other uh, corporations that you know or any other items or business entities that the tax code consider as a corporation will be taxed uh, accordingly as we uh, discuss the different taxation of a corporation. So aside from the different exam corporations given in the definition, so there are only there are there are already three in that definition. So what are other exam corporations? So the following are other exam corporations. First, government agencies and instrumentality. That is because of the exemption of the government. That is an inherent inherent limitation of taxation. Next, GOCCs such as your GSIS, SSS. Still health and local water districts, they are also exempt. Again, why? Because of the inherent limitation of the exemption of a government. Next, we have your cooperatives. You have your members only. They are considered exempt. However, with, non, with non-members, they are considered taxable. Why are co cooperatives uh, considered as exempt? They are considered as exempt because uh, there is one social purpose or there is a purpose that is common to all of the members of that cooperative. And uh, it is for the benefit of all of those members. That's why uh, as a fiscal incentive, the members only cooperative is considered exempt because everything is given by the members and at the same time all benefits accruing to the cooperative will be used by the members themselves so it is only revolving around the members it will be considered as exempt 
However, if there are transactions with non-members and there is an accumulated reserve that is more than 10 million pesos, it will be considered as taxable. So it will become taxable like a corporation. So like how we discuss later the different types of corporation, they will be taxable that way. And also other corporations under the Section 30 of the uh, National Internal Revenue Code. So these are the different uh, exam corporations uh, that is listed down normally for social purposes. Normally for social purposes, it is uh, listed down under our Section 30 of our NIRC. Okay. So there are normally different organizations or entities that is considered exempt there under your Section 30. And uh, again, it is only for special purposes or certain purposes. But before you can be exempt, you need to get a certificate of tax exemption. Uh, if you still remember our discussion before, during the start of our subject, I told you that your exemption is not the rule. It is the exception. And being the exception, so if you have an exempt corporation, so you are exempt, so that is the exception to the rule. Being an exception to the rule, it does not automatically apply. You need to still get a certificate of exemption showing that you are really exempt. It does not automatically says that you are exempt. So for example, soon when you go to your practice and you will see a nonprofit hospital or uh, let's say any hospital that is, and uh, under the code, it is exempt. It is not automatically that that medical uh, practitioner uh, medical practice or that practitioner will be considered exempt why because you need to still get a certificate of exemption for that exemption to apply so it is not automatic so although these items are really exempt normally uh cooperatives and other corporations under section 30 of the nirc they need to get a certificate of exemption and as a rule for your other corporations if that is a related activity, uh, as I told you a while back, normally other corporations under Section 30 of NIRC, these are the corporations which has a certain purpose. So if ever that particular uh, income co comes from your related activity, it is considered exempt. But if the income comes from unrelated activity, it will become taxable. It will become taxable. So only the unrelated activity will become taxable. But the related activity will always become exempt. It will always become exempt. So take note of that for other corporations under Section 30 of the NIRC. Since it is created for a specific purpose, uh, the purposes are listed down under Section 30. So those purposes you follow, if ever the activity is related, it's exempt. If not, it is taxable. Now let's look into the different classes of corporate taxpayers. So there are generally three classes of your corporate taxpayers. First, you have your domestic corporation, then you have your resident foreign corporation and non-resident foreign corporations. So uh, before create law, before create law, these corporations are taxed at 30%. So before the 8, they are taxed at 30% domestic resident and non-resident foreign corporations. But with the invent of your the 8, the tax rate now is at 25%. The tax rate now is at 25%. Now, uh, what we need to know under classes of corporate taxpayers is uh, as to their tax situs. So what income are taxed and how do we tax them? So in your domestic corporation, you already know that within and without are included for domestic. Next, for resident foreign corporation, it is only within. For non-resident foreign corporation, it is only within. So for domestic corporations, again, we need to add within and without. That means inside and outside the Philippines. While for resident foreign and non-resident foreign, 
uh, we only include income within or inside the Philippines. And they are now taxed at the same rate, 25, 25, 25. Now, let's go to your domestic corporations. So the following are your domestic corporations. So I, I place it in a tabular format and I will give you the general rule, the taxation as a general rule of that particular corporation and what domestic corporations are taxed at a special rate. So in general, the net income of domestic corporation is taxed at, uh, it is taxed at 25%. Okay, it is taxed at 25%. However, it is subject to MCIP of 1%. If ever the uh, corporate income tax is lesser, is lesser or less than the 1% MCIP. We will discuss that later. Now, let's go to your special corporation. For a special corporation, uh, we have here your proprietary educational institutions and nonprofit hospitals. So we have two types of special domestic corporations. So special domestic corporation, we have two types. The first one is your proprietary educational institution, and the next one is your nonprofit hospitals. Okay, so two special uh, domestic corporations. When we say proprietary educational institution, this talks about your private, okay? These are your private schools. Nonprofit uh, hospitals, of course, are nonprofit, meaning it is not for profit. So uh, the net income is subject to 1% tax rate only. If the gross income from a related trade business and other activities does not exceed 50%. Okay, so there is a provision here. So the rate is 1% if the unrelated does not exceed 50%. So what if it exceeds? What if it exceeds? Uh, by the way, the, the provision of not to exceed 50% is known as your predominance tax. So what is this predominance tax? In your predominance tax, if the unrelated is uh, less than 50%, less than or equal to 50%, you will be subject to 1%. But if it's greater to 50%, then you will be subject to the regular rate, which is 25%. Okay, again, there are two corporations or two special domestic corporations. That is your proprietary educational institution and your nonprofit hospitals. However, as a rule, although they are subject to a 1% tax rate, it is subject to a predominance test. So you test the unrelated gross income. You test the unrelated gross income. If it's less than or equal to 50%, it is subject at 1%. If not, it is subject to 25%. Okay, so for example, we have here your gross income, then related. Uh, 2 million, unrelated, 6 million. Total gross income of 8 million. So let's test the unrelated gross income. So the unrelated gross income is 6 million over 8 million. So that rate is equal to 75%. That rate is equal to 75%. Since it is greater to 50%, then what you will use as a rate, 25%. But what if your gross income is like this. Related is 2 million and unrelated is 500,000. So this is 2.5 million. So 2 million over 2.5 million. Uh, we have 500,000 over 2.5 million. That will only give you a 20% unrelated gross income. So since that is less than or equal to 50%, then we use the tax rate 1%. Again, what do you test here? the total gross income from the different sources. If the unrelated is less than or equal to 50%, use the 1% tax rate. If not, then use the regular tax rate for domestic corporation, that is your 25%. And take note, the 1% tax rate is applicable only from July 1, 2020 to 
uh, June 30, 2023. It is applicable only from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2023. Because uh, before, this is subject to 10%. Before, the rate is 10%. Okay? I think after June 30, 2023, it will revert back to the rate of 10%. The create law was just a uh, place for uh for the for the uh pandemic to to just stabilize the different industries especially the corporation so that is only to address the pandemic it is not to really uh to re to really change all the tax rates and make it permanent that's why uh, under the train law it has only a certain period for this uh tax rate one percent tax rate uh, applicable up to June 30, 2023 only. Uh, if after that, it will revert back to its old rate, that is your 10%. Okay? So remember to uh, proprietary educational institution or private schools and your nonprofit hospitals, but subject to a predominance test. Sir, what is the predominance test? The predominance test is provided here. The uh, Net income, gross income from unrelated trade or business and other activities does not exceed 50% of the total gross income. That's why we divide the unrelated to your total. We divide the unrelated to your total gross income. And then we test it for the rate, whether 1% or 25%. Okay. Another special corporation is your uh msmes okay msmes so how do we consider a corporation as an msme a corporation is an msme if ever the asset is less than or equal to 100 million at its book value except uh land where uh the business is located or equipment is located okay so the asset is less than or equal to 100 million uh the book value except land where the business is located equipment is located also if the taxable income take note the taxable income is less than or equal to 5 million okay you are considered msme and subject to a 20 percent tax rate if your total asset it's less than or equal to 100 million of its book value, except uh, the land, of course, where the uh, where the business is located, including your equipment, and your taxable income is less than or equal to 5 million. Okay, so for example, we have here uh, total assets of corporation, 120 million pesos, let's say included therein is the land where the building is located the value is 50 million the taxable income of the corporation is 8 million okay so first we test the asset if ever it is less than or equal to 100 million but in testing that we need to remove the land we need to remove the land which the uh, business is located or any equipment of the company is located so here we have a land in which the building of the company is located worth 50 million so we remove that so 120 million less 50 million this will give us only 70 million so the first uh, requirement that the asset is less than or equal to 100 million is met next as to your taxable income, the taxable income must be less than or equal to 5 million. The taxable income of this is on, is 8 million. The taxable income of this corporation is 8 million. Since this is greater than 5 million, then you do not apply. So what is the rule then? If these two items are present, then 20%. If one is present and one is absent, go to the general rule, 25%. If one, if one is present, one is absent again, go to the general rule of 25%. When do we have 20%? If the asset is less than or equal to 100 million and the taxable income of that corporation is less than or equal to 5 million. 
then we apply the special rate of 20%. If not, we go back to the rules of 25%. Same rule with your proprietary or educational institution, including your nonprofit hospitals. If ever the rule as to your predominance test is met, then go with your special rate, that is 1%. But if not, then go back to the regular rate, which is 25%. Next, we have your MCIT. So what is MCIT? So here, you compare your MCIT together with your CIT. So what is CIT? That is your corporate income tax. So the corporate income tax, you all know, is now 25%, regardless whether uh, domestic, resident foreign, or non-resident foreign corporation. So you compare MCIT to that CIT. And whichever is higher, you pay it. Okay. When is CIT or when is MCIT applied? MCIT is applied beginning in the fourth taxable year following the year of commencement. Fourth taxable year following the commencement. So the year of commencement plus four. The for taxable year following the year of commencement is year plus four. So, for example, you commence in 2017, you add four, then 2021, you start implementing MCIT. So, in 2017, is there MCIT? None. 2018, is there MCIT? None. 2019, is there MCIT? None. 2020, none. 2021, you apply MCIT. And what is the rule of MCIT? In the rule of MCIT, you compare the CIT to your MCIT. You compare the CIT to your MCIT, so 25%, 1%. And then whichever is higher, that is the amount of tax. Again, you compare the CIT to your MCIT, whichever is higher, that is the amount of tax. So let's have an example. So let's say we have here a gross income of 10 million. We have a deductions amounting to 9.8 million. So our taxable income is 200,000. Okay. So we get the CIT, that is 25% multiplied the taxable income. So 25% of 200,000 is 50,000. And then you compare it to your MCIT, assuming MCIT is applicable. When is MCIT applicable again? Y plus 4, the year of operation or year of commencement plus 4 years. So assuming MCIT is applicable, then you need to compare the CIT to your MCIT. Your MCIT is equal to 1% of your gross income. 1% of your gross income. So 1% times 10 million. So the 1% of 10 million is equal to 100,000. And which is higher? 100,000. So that will be your tax due. So that is the effect of MCIT. You just need to compare it with your corporate income tax and whatever is the amount higher between MCIT and CIT is the tax due. So what happens to your excess? What happens to your excess? Because the tax due should have been only 50000 right? However, since you have now an MCIT pursuant to the law, you need to pay which is higher. That is 100000 So what happens now, sir, to our excess? The excess can be carried over. The excess can be carried over. So we call that one as your excess or your uh, excess MCIT. It is like a tax credit. It will decrease your tax due on the next year. It will decrease the tax due on the next year. And the uh, validity of that credit, the validity of that credit is only up to three years. So for example, 2021, you use MCIT you can uh, get the tax credit on 2022. If you cannot get it, you can still try on 2023 until 2024. Why? Because you only have three years to claim that tax credit. You can only have three years. Sir, what if at the end of the three years, I did not claim the whole excess? 
then you cannot claim it already. It is considered as expired. And since it is already expired, then you cannot deduct it to your total tax due. Okay. We go back to the rules here. Again, as a general rule, your domestic corporation is subject to 25% tax rate on its income within and without. However, we have certain special domestic corporations with a special tax rate. And what are those? First, proprietary educational institution and non-profit hospitals. But it is subject to a predominance test. If the unrelated gross income is less than or equal to 50%, you apply the special rate of 1%. But if the unrelated gross income is greater to 50%, then you apply the regular rate of 25%. Also, we have your MSMEs. Wherein, if ever the asset is less than or equal to 100 million on its book value, you deduct any land in which your property or business uh, place or equipment is placed, then uh, you reduce the 100 million with that amount. Furthermore, you test the taxable income if less than or equal to 3 million. If the two are met, if the two items are met, then you can get the special tax rate of 20%. If not, you go back to the regular rate of 25%. Furthermore, uh, your domestic corporation is subject to MCIT. What is the concept of MCIT? It applies after four years. So the year of commencement plus four. You just need to compare the corporate income tax, the regular rate of 25%, versus the MCIT rate of 1%. Take note, the corporate income tax is based on the taxable income while your MCIT is based on your gross income. And whichever is amount that is higher, then that is the amount of your tax due. Now, as to the excess MCIT, remember, the excess MCIT can be carried over for three years. It can be carried over for three years. So those are the rates for domestic corporations. Next, we have your resident foreign corporations. But before we go to your resident foreign corporations, uh, I think it's worthy to mention again that the gross income tax, gross income tax requirement before of 15% is already repealed by your create. Therefore, by create no wala ng gross income tax. Uh, furthermore, no more improperly accumulated earnings tax or your IAET. That is a uh, equal to uh, 10%, IAET uh, of 10%, it is also removed already by your CREATE. So GIT, Gross Income Tax, and IAET was already repealed by CREATE. They were already removed. That's why uh, those are the only rates that you need to remember for your domestic corporation. General rate, 25%. Special rate, 1%. Uh, that is for your uh private schools and your nonprofit hospitals subject to a predominance test and then msmes at 20 percent subject to the rule on asset and your taxable income also we have your mcit of one percent applicable year plus four next we have your resident foreign corporations so what are the rates that we need to remember in a resident foreign corporation we already know what is a resident foreign corporation. It is a corporation doing business here in the Philippines. So there is a branch office here in the Philippines. Now, what is the rate? We all know that the regular corporate income tax or the CIT for your resident foreign corporation is now at 25%. As we said a while back, domestic corporation, resident foreign corporations, including non-resident foreign corporations, have the same rate at 25 percent now what are the uh, special rates so we only have one special rate for a resident foreign corporation we call it your international carriers what are these international carriers these are different carriers or business carriage which uh, do business here in the philippines so these are any carriage business or uh Another term for carriage is carriage is um transportation business. So they are into your transportation business, uh, and uh, they transport here in the Philippines. 
they transport here in the Philippines. So uh, normally, you know, these are these are your vessels. Aside from your vessels, these are your aircrafts. So they transport to and from the Philippines. However, they are international carriers. When we say international carriers, they just do business here in the Philippines. They are not actually from the Philippines. They just do business from the Philippines. Okay. Now, in your uh, international carriers, take note, as I told you a while back, your international carriers can either be uh, air, air or just a shipment on a vessel. So long as they they ship, they ship either a person, a property, or a thing whatsoever, whether that is for shipment only, so long as they carry, so long as they carry or they transport, they are subject to this rate. The rate is 2.5% on their gross Philippine billings. So gross Philippine billings. And what do we mean by gross Philippine billings? A gross Philippine billing is known as your outgoing flights. So when we say outgoing flights, it is from the Philippines to abroad. From the Philippines to abroad okay so when we say outgoing flights uh, these are flights from the Philippines to abroad so from the Philippines means it originates from the Philippines and goes now to your uh, place of destination normally uh, some of the terms they use in your outgoing is your outbound so outbound flights so from PH to abroad if ever we have here an international courier you just need to look into their outbound flights so for example uh we have here an international carrier the following are their billings the following are their billings so we have here outgoing and then we have here incoming so let's say the outgoing is 8 million the incoming is 3 million when we say outgoing this is ph going to other foreign country incoming that is other foreign country going to the ph what we tax is those going outside the philippines meaning outgoing flights so only 8 million so the 8 million will be subject to a 2.5 percent tax rate sir how about the incoming will we tax it no why because it came from other foreign country Okay, so this is already outside or without. Remember, resident foreign corporations are only subject to within. That's why only the outgoing flights, only the outgoing flights are subject to tax because it originates from the Philippines. It originates from the Philippines, okay? So it is subject to a 2.5% tax rate. Now, the concept of transshipment. So we say uh, gross Philippine billings means uh, a transportation from the Philippines to the abroad. What happens if there is a transshipment? When we say uh, transshipment, there is a uh, layover or a change of flight while in transit. So normally those, uh, those things we know it as connecting flight. We know it as a connecting flight. Okay. So if that is a connecting flight or what we call as transshipment, we only include up to the point of transshipment. So for example, uh, Philippines going to Singapore, then Singapore going to UAE. So that is the total flight. So the total price of this one is 3,500, let's see, 35,000, 35,000 pesos, Philippines to UAE. However, since it is a transshipment from Singapore to UAE, we will only get the amount up to the point of the first transshipment wherein Philippines to Singapore because we cannot tax Singapore to UAE. Sir, why can we tax Singapore to UAE? Because that is already outside our jurisdiction. Remember, we can only tax up to our territory. So we can only tax outgoing pH to Singapore. So let's say 
if the total price is 35,000, we broke it down as uh, 10,000 Philippines to Singapore and then 25,000 Singapore to UAE. So the amount that will only be subject to tax here is the 10,000 because that is only the point of transshipment, which uh, is an outgoing flight from the Philippines. So we do not tax now the Singapore to UAE, okay? Only PH directly to abroad, not to another abroad. Because what happens here, PH to Singapore, Singapore to UAE. So Singapore to UAE is not already Philippines to another. What is Philippines to another foreign country is only this, okay? So that is the only uh, amount that we tax. So we, we tax the 10,000. Next. The concept of layover. So what is a layover? Normally, uh, what happens is that in a connecting flight, in a connecting flight, the courier will uh, layover into one destination. That is, of course, to uh, check the airplane, look into the fuel, look into what needs in the airplane, etc., etc. Now, in a layover, as a general rule, it is not considered outgoing from the Philippines. So what happens here is it will lay over to the Philippines. So for example, uh, Singapore going now to Philippines and then going to UAE. However, what happens only is a layover. There is no change in, there is no change as to the airline. There is no change as to the airline. So same airline. A while back, there is a change in your airline due to a connecting flight. Here, it is only a layover. It is still a Singaporean airline. Now, Singaporean airline layovers to the Philippines, and from Philippines, it will now transport to UAE, for example. Now, if ever it stays less than or equal to 48 hours, the Philippines to UAE is not considered as outgoing. The Philippines to UAE is not considered as outgoing, but if that is greater than 48 hours, the Philippines to UAE is considered outgoing. Why? Because uh, we treat it already as a shipment coming from the Philippines as an outgoing flight. Okay? So those are the rules that you need to take note in an international courier. Generally, International carriers means transportation, but international transportation. So all outbound, meaning coming from the Philippines going to abroad, is subject to 2.5% on their gross Philippine billings. And the gross Philippine billings is your outgoing flight. If there is a transshipment, you only include the direct transshipment, Philippines to the next one. And then if there is a layover, do not treat it as a uh, flight outgoing the Philippines if ever less than or equal to 48 hours. If not, then treat it as a Philippine billing. All other else is subject to 25% tax rate, also subject to MCIT. You already know the concept of MCIT 1%. Next, we have your branch profit remittance tax. Your branch profit remittance tax is, excuse me, the remittance of the branch to the home office. So remember, what happens in a resident foreign corporation is there will be only a branch office in the Philippines. So since this is a branch office, there is an, uh, there is a home office in abroad. Okay. So branch office, there is a home office in abroad. Now, if we remit the profit, if the branch office, a uh, branch office in the Philippines will now remit the profit to the home office, it is subject to 15% final tax on profit remitted. So for example, this is the profit remittance, 300,000. You subject it to a branch profit remittance tax of 15%. So uh, the amount that will be subject to a, the amount of tax will be 45,000. The amount of tax will be 45,000. Furthermore, take note 
of the term profit remitted. Under profit remitted, you deduct here. So from the profit, you deduct any interest. You deduct any dividend. You deduct any rents. You deduct any royalties. You deduct any uh, capital gains. Sir, why do we deduct those items? Because they are already subject to a final tax. If ever, the branch profit will now be uh, taxed again, including the interest, dividends, rents. They are taxed twice. They are taxed twice. That's why uh, these items are not already included on your profit because they are already taxed. What is included only are those items that get taxed. Okay? The reason, double taxation. The reason, double taxation. So in your profit, you deduct those items subject already to final tax. Next, we have your non-resident foreign corporations. As a rule, your non-resident foreign corporation is subject to 25% tax rate. It is subject to 25% tax rate. Now, uh, what are the special tax rate? We have here your rentals and charter fees payable to non-resident owners of vessels chartered by Philippines chartered by Philippine nationals. So what happens here? What's the difference, sir? A while back in your uh, vessels, in your vessels, they are doing business here in the Philippines. Here, they are not doing business here in the Philippines. Uh, they are just here because the vessel was chartered by a national in the Philippines, meaning it is rented out. So the rental fee or charter fee, those are the terms used, rental fee or charter fee that you paid is subject to 4.5%. Again, what is the story of this first one? You are renting a vessel to a corporation not doing business in the Philippines. To a corporation not doing business in the Philippines. Okay. And uh, in renting out, you are subject to a tax rate of 4.5%. So the rental fee, or what we call as charter fee, is subject to a rate of 4.5%. Next, if you rent aircraft, machinery, and other equipment, 7.5%. So vessel, 4.5%. Aircraft, machinery and other equipment 7.5 so vessel so this is the vessel let's see this is the vessel 4.5 percent and this is the aircraft so assuming there's an aircraft there 7.5 percent it will be easier for you to to memorize it because a vessel is here in the land and nasa mababa ang lupa so mas mababa yung rate ang aircraft nasa itaas Eh, mas mataas yung rate niya, 7.5%. All other else, 25%. All other else, 25%. Now, the income tax due. The uh, taxable income, you just multiply it to the rate. Then you have your tax due. You deduct any creditable withholding tax. That is your tax is still due. Let's uh, summarize the rates. So first, we have your domestic corporation. What is the general rate? The general rate is 25% subject to MCIT of 1%. What are the special rates? So the following are the special rates. The first one is your proprietary educational institution or your nonprofit hospital. It is subject to a 1% tax rate, but Test it to your predominance. Furthermore, we also have your MSMEs subject to a 20% tax rate. Test the asset if ever it is less than or equal to 100 million. And then test the uh, taxable income if that is less than or equal to 5 million. And the rate is 20%. Next, after your domestic corporation, we also discuss your resident foreign corporation. So the general rule is 25% subject to MCIT of 1%. 
And what are the special rates? The special rates are your international couriers. They are subject at 2.5% based on your gross Philippine billings. Then you have your non-resident foreign corporation as a general rule. The rate is 25%, not subject to MCIT. And what are the special rates? So we have here your lease of your aircraft, 7.5%. Lease of vessels at 4.5%. So as long as you know the rates, you know the type of corporation, just get the percentage, you're good to go in your corporate taxation. Last topic here is your tax filing. So you will file here and uh, you will file a quarterly and also an annual. So your quarterly is your 1702Q. It is a 60th day close of each quarter. And if annual, we have your 1702RT, that is your regular income tax rate. So it is 15th day of the fourth month after the close of the taxable year. If you are exempt, if you are exempt, you use your 1702EX, 1702EX. EX means exempt. RT means regular taxation. So if you are exempt corporation, you 1702 EX. If you are a regular taxation uh, type of corporation based on the different rates, you use your 1702 RT. So that's it for your corporate taxation.